It's hard to capture an audience. It's been told that a human has an average attention span of about 10 seconds. Now let's say if an audience is watching a movie, they'll obviously be invested in it either way, but that doesn't mean movies can't be boring. And the toughest thing when crafting a film is to capture an audience. The opening shot of a movie should tell you a lot. It's how you awaken the audience from a reel of trailers and a montage of company logos. And American Animals manages to effectively create a cold open that not only keeps the viewer engaged, but leaves them with more questions than answers. So, let's dissect the opening of American Animals. Directed by Bart Layton, American Animals is a drama that is also part documentary. It's noted as a true story, and using the real people who took part in this real event as interviewees for the film adds to the authenticity, and almost adds a sort of tangibility throughout the entire film. Very few movies based on reality actually have the real people come on screen, let alone talk. Most of the time, they're just added at the end credits, usually as pictures. Now in Leighton's film, they're integral to the film, integral to the film's pacing and scene development. There's a multitude of scenes that wouldn't work if the real people the actors are playing as weren't being interviewed for the film. I'm pretty sure he told me about it at Rich's party. I remember it being cold. Book? I think I told him about it in the car. Maybe November, it was cold. I still don't understand how a book could be worth $12 million. Since Layton has already delved into documentary filmmaking with The Imposter, which debuted 2012, he knows how to work interviewees into a film. Right from the beginning, though, we are shown multiple interviewees who are related to the main cast, but not before we get hit with the similarities between man and animal. American Animals attempts and succeeds in developing a narrative which pushes human nature to the extreme, and when humans are pushed to extremes, their animalistic tendencies tend to come out, and this is actually one of the movie's themes. Right from the opening shot, we see this comparison. We even have the sound of nature and the outside when the quote is on screen, and when the eye is shown, we see the red of what seems to be a vulture's eye embedded into Warren Lipka's eye. Warren Lipka portrayed by Evan Peters. So, we've already got the viewer curious, what could this analogy signify? While this question arises, we get hit with the tactic of making the audience ask questions and giving half answers. We're shown a makeup kit, two shots with a length of about three seconds, enough to keep the audience on its toes, not too fast, not too short. Then, We then get more shots of Warren applying makeup, but only on his eyes. We get hit with music, which sets the tone for the movie, along with establishing shots of a town, but upside down, and paintings of birds. And these paintings are the things that the main ensemble will interact with in the film. But the audience doesn't know that yet. The music begins to create an unsettling mood, constant beating, cello, create this mood. We're then shown scenes of the removal of a license plate and an old man, but thanks to the previous scene, we can assume this person who is new to us is also a young man disguised as an older man. And then we get to our first interviewee, a teacher who explains that he's unsure how the main characters could have done something like that. I, I was at a loss. So now, more questions. Why the disguises? Why the license plate? What even took place? We then get more interviewees who explain that they were confused and bewildered that these young boys could get into such a situation, even parents. Now, most shots of the main cast are shrouded in secrecy. The movie does not want you to know what's going on with these characters and their motivations, and all of the shots with them in focus are extreme close-ups, which prevents any focusing on the background. Even this silhouetted medium shot is not in focus, so we have no idea where these characters are. If an audience member pays attention, they can discover a lot about a character based on their background. Compare shots like these to this shot, this shot tells you a lot about the person. You can see what they're doing. You can even see family pictures in the background. So we get that feeling of mystery. The air of mystery is created to escalate tension. The audience is itching to find out the answers to all their questions. What could these kids have done that's so terrible? And as more time passes, we're finally introduced to a lot more medium and close-up shots, not as many extreme close-ups. We get a feeling of what's happening. Young man dressed up, a van, a driver, two other men are disguised. That's four men dressed as older men. As soon as we get to the father who begins to cry, we're hit with more sound, and that's the ticking of a clock, which forces itself into the music playing in the background. Since it's not perfectly in tempo, the strange misalignment of noise creates even more tension and discomfort. The clock is also symbolic for how time is running out, and this event that these interviewees are talking about is about to happen. 
Now we see these four walking into the building. With the context that has been told before, we can assume that whatever bad thing the interviewees were talking about, it's all going to happen in this location. We're shown shots of the clock hands moving, and finally as they're about to enter the building, the place where all of our questions will be answered, the hand strikes 12, all noise stops, and we're hit with the movie's title. Now let's talk about these four minutes. Why is this cold open so effective? It describes the movie's plot in a way that reveals, again, like I said, pretty much nothing. Layden is purposely excluding information to keep the audience intrigued and invested in the movie, as well as its characters. We hear these people talking about how morally good these characters are, or were, and upon seeing the father cry for his child, we start to sympathize for the people who knew the main cast, and in doing so, we start to sympathize for the main cast itself. We're told of the characters in the film's dilemma, as well as in a way, its outcome. Everyone being interviewed knows what happened, and it's the journey to that outcome that we're about to witness. American Animals is probably one of my favorite heist films. It's a heist movie which shows that no, it's not like Ocean's Eleven where everyone looks cool and everything's badass. The film even satirizes this concept at one point. The film grounds the idea of a heist so much that we get to see the characters question their own morality and see them break apart mentally and emotionally. It's not often you see a heist film that pulls off a mood of true horror in the heist itself. Not suspense, I mean horror and terror. As well as the fun yet morbid feeling of planning a heist which could lead to the lives of four young men being destroyed. Now if you haven't seen American Animals, watch it, and it's kind of obvious what the end result of the movie is, but again, it's not about the ending of the film, it's about how these characters got there. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you really liked it, please uh, subscribe. And if you actually really, really liked it, you can support my Patreon. Also, please, if you really liked this individual video, please like it, share it, and of course, comment on it. So thanks for coming to the table, and I'll see you all next time.